Oh, you. You. Hey. Oh, me. You. 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 Do you want to see you? I see you. I see you. You. That's just to draw you. Hi folks, we're in the woods today. Out here with Ross. And we just found a mallet. Interesting. Anyway, gonna be making a tripod setup and uh, showing you how I set up my grill. Should be interesting. Might be different to what you've seen before. Stay tuned. Time to get the grill set up. So, this is literally the simplest thing ever. So all you need is a grill. This is a cake um, cooling tray. You can get them for about a pound. They're really, really cheap, really lightweight. And some wire, this is just gardening wire. And four carabiners. You can also use key rings. I've used that before, but all you do is you just up. And then you, just, you can take them off or I tend to just leave them on because when they sit flat they take up the same amount of space as the grill if you measure them right. And then I just have a big carabiner for hooking them all in at the top. There we go. Yeah, my original one had, uh, you know, keyring loops. I think that works a lot better. There's one carabiner at the top and eight keyring loops. Because I've tried to do it now with carabiners. And they just don't spin round quite as willingly. So, we'll make do today. But if you're doing it yourself, I would recommend using keyring loops. It still works. Simple. So, the bit I haven't shown you is the paracord bit. Okay, so the knot I'm going to be using for this is called an adjustable collie hitch. And I hope that's the right name for the knot. I just got told off a guy. It was actually down at the Cornwall RV, if anybody's ever been there. Um, but yeah, he uh, he showed me this knot. And it's it's kind of like a pressing knot. You you get your two bits, or your one bit of rope wrapped around something. You form like a, a little box. I'm gonna get a bit more slack for the sake of the video. But yeah, so you form like a box, right? You then wrap this bit around. I usually go four or five times. One, two, three. There we go, that'll do. So I've got the rope coming down, wrapped around there, and then all I do is you see how this piece is coming over the other rope? And this one's going behind it. You just make like a box like that. And then you put this piece through there to make a loop. And you can pull it all the way through uh, 
if you want it to be forever. But this is basically an adjustable collie hitch. Works exactly the same as a pressing nut. If you pinch it, it slides. But if you don't, it holds. I use this for tying down my guy lines on my tarp, all sorts of things. But it works really good for above the grill. So carabiner is going to be about there. So all I'm going to do here is just tie a little loop just for the carabiner to hook onto. He comes back from the ever, never ending phone call. <laughs> Alright, Joe, we don't speak very often, but uh, we, we do we end up speaking for ages. So. No, that's all good. I was right. buzzing with my bike working there. Right, so I've got the grill set up. Carabiner. I showed you how to do the adjustable collie hitch. All you do is you just loop that round, and you've got your grill dangling. If you want to move it about, you can move the tripod. If you want to adjust the height, you can lower it down or you can raise it up. Obviously the bigger the tripod, the more adjustment you've got. But how cool is that? I wasn't sure if I was too embarrassed about this, but I'm cooking a Rustler's burger on the fire. Mainly just because it's convenient. You get everything in a nice sealed pack and you can just cook it up. So, chuck that on there. Technically you're doing is heating them up. Cooking. I've had a Dutch oven hanging off this knot before and it was fine. I was a little bit nervous, I'm not going to lie. But it works. Rotisserie style. Now the best thing about this setup is that you can cook when there's big flames. You don't have to wait for your coals, which just saves a lot of time. Like, see if you've been hiking all day and you just want to get cooking, you can cook on big flames. Like, you can set up a bigger tripod if you've got a massive fire. You can have, you know, you can have this grill at any height, and then as soon as you your fire dies down and you end up with the coals, you can just drop it right down. You don't really have to mess about too much. And the only thing you do have to watch is if you've got flames coming up sort of past the grill um, or if you leave the grill on when there's no food because the food tends to block the heat from getting to the rope but other thing you can do is you could just have a, a little chain you know, like a really fine chain and just have a hook on the one side and you just wrap the chain around and hook it on I've done that before that's what we've got at our main spot you know the bug out spot and that works great too but it's a bit more bulky like this is this is a really lightweight setup you can you can pack this in any sort of day pack or whatever. And you got a really functional grill. Better flip them. I know rustlers are bad. But honestly, that is the handiest way to carry a burger. And when you cook them on a grill, they actually turn out really good. And of course the grill is great, but you can also just hang a pot off this. So Take the grill off, hang it up. And for this, a carabiner is definitely the best. 
Yeah, check that out. Fully adjustable. Using a spork, light my fire spork. These titanium sporks, they always come with a you know, like a cutting fork or a cutting edge thing here. What I do is I sand it round just so that when you're eating with a fork it, it just feels better in the mouth. Because well you don't want a big spiky thing there. I don't know why they come like that, but a little bit of sandpaper, it, it honestly it grinds down in two seconds and it makes a huge difference to your spork. Right, so that's us had a burger, made some coffee. Hope you like this grill setup. It's so simple, so easy, and it, well, the grill costs about a pound, and the carabiners I think I got four for fifty p. So you can also use key rings if you've just got key rings lying around. I would actually recommend using key rings instead. It works better. Right, if we go into Kelly, go to the bank, go to the hub for a couple of hours. I can pay him for half seven. I'll get my bike. Right. At nine o'clock. Doesn't get dark till about half nine. Ten. My bike's about nine o'clock, come home, put it away, go to my bed, nice and early. Ross is happy he got his motorbike on the road again today. Yep. I just want to get and it's loud as anything, it's got no baffle in the exhaust. I heard it coming down the street. And uh, yes. yeah, that thing's thumpy. <laughs> Might be doing some bike camping in the future. That'll be a good one to watch out for. Which is even food chat. Mm. What are you thinking about bike camping? Are you thinking about just loading up the RD and using the bikes to go? Are you thinking about grind well on with the bike? I don't know. I'd possibly just using the bike to go. But maybe using my bike as some part of the tarp setup. I've never done bike camping. I've seen quite a few folk bike camping. Aye. And what they all do is they all set their tarp up and drive their bike onto one edge of it. Aye. Put the tarp up over the bike so the petrol tank and pin it down. So yeah. that gives you your airframe. Yeah. Have it's extra at one end to tuck in, so it's in close shelter at one end. If you then get the length of your bike, which for me is fine for you, your feet will be hanging out. Uh -huh. Dead easy, all you need is a sleeping bag and a tarp. Yeah. And that's you. And a roll mat. If you like the fancy eye, if you want to stick collapsing this in. Yeah. Alright, so that's it for this one. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks. Oh. I forgot to say, my new axe hatchet, need to stop calling it an axe, worked brilliantly. It was, uh, it's a little bit small to be honest, like I usually use a bigger hatchet or my, my Hultifer's chopping axe. Uh, I found when I was splitting logs, my hand was quite close to the logs. But see for just a, a wee day pack or something like that, works brilliantly and it's really lightweight. So. And it's still sharp. That's me bashed it through a whole bunch of logs, even some rotten logs and things like that, which are quite known to, to dull edges. And it is still... Yep. Shaving sharp. So, there we go. Always take your rubbish home, folks. See on the way in here, we found a old fire pit from somebody. And uh, all cans of dragon soup and stuff like that half burned in it, just shameful. So always take your garbage home, try not to just chuck the plastic in the fire, I know it's easy to do. It's also easy to just put it in a bag.
There's nothing but footprints. Let's get out of here. Got to love it when you find bits like this. This is not our spot. But let's tidy it up anyway. There's another can over there. Need to wait for the rain to wash some of that ash away. Mm. I managed to get another two bags. Well, one of them's ours, but yeah, that must have been about what ten cans. Well, technically, a couple of glass bottles, a bottle of buck fast. Technically, all the rubbish that's in that is ours is a pack of lunch chunks and a Russell's burger wrapper. The rest of it is all beer cans and not ours. What do they use to start the fire? That's just cheating. <laughs> <laughs> 